Hello and welcome to Medieval 2 Total War 3rd Age Divide and Conquer version 1.2. It's time to play another campaign on this game, on this mod, more specifically. Uh, of which the links, by the way, in case you're interested, are all in the description for both 3rd Age as well as uh, the Divide and Conquer submod. I'm also using a music pack, as you might be able to tell, this is not the copyrighted music, uh, because if I were using that, then I would be getting copyright claims left, right, and center. So I've decided to uh, use a music pack provided by the developer, the, the lead developer on the Divide and Conquer mod. Uh, description to the guy who makes the music will be in the, uh, or uh, sorry, a link to the guy who makes the music will be in the description as well. He's not a YouTuber. Um, but without any further ado, let us jump into a campaign. I'm going to be playing as the realm of Imladris, which is essentially Rivendell. Um, our leader is Loremaster Elrond. We all know him. We all love him. Uh, he is definitely one of the better generals in this game, as far as, I'm, uh, as far as I can tell. My experience with the game, and with Medieval 2 in general, is still very limited, but mostly with the game uh, more relevant because uh, I haven't checked like all the leaders or anything, all the faction leaders, but uh, Elrond seems to be pretty damn strong. So, we have our heir, Prince, Prince Eladan, who is his son. We've got another son as well, but he is not the heir, so he's not mentioned here. <laughs> our capital is Imlagis. Uh, we only start with a single province of Imladris, or Rivendell. Um, I think Imladris is the elven way, or the elven name for it, and Rivendell is the human name, or something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, we start with a single province, as it says right there, Imladris itself, which is Rivendell. Feel free to read all this. I won't be reading through it, because we'll be here for another five minutes if I do so. Our strengths, we have level five smithing, we have a very strong roster, and we have the finest overall elites in Middle-earth. So... We get some of the best units in the entire game, basically, across the board. Cavalry, infantry, both melee and ranged. Just very good units. However, because of this, we have very slow recruitment. We have incredibly expensive units, which is uh, immediately shown in the early game as well. Our uh, starting units are super expensive too. We have restricted construction. We also have a small starting domain of just Dimladris. I will be playing on Very Hard, Very Hard, as that is what this mod is intended to be played on. We're playing a long campaign, and that is all that you need to know. So, let's jump into the game. Alright, we have made our way into the campaign after a wonderful cutscene. So we get our first opening message, Welcome to Divide and Conquer. I will quickly scan through these. I've read these before myself, but it's uh, interesting to note for you guys as well. Um, so let's just quickly go through them. Recruitment is restricted by an event called the Barracks event, which basically means 60 to 68 turns uh, into the game. We will only be able to recruit pre-Barracks units, sort of like a pre-Marian thing in Rome 1. Um, and also, you know, recruitment will speed up once the barracks event has happened. Characters can die of old age, but not until they reach at least 120. There are four turns per year, so a 16-year-old character would take 416 turn turns to die of old age. I think um, Alron starts at 32 or something, so we got we got a ways to go. Uh, many units get a visual change to their battle model when they're upgraded at blacksmith, which is interesting. 
Bodyguard units have a hard-coded replenishment number of 77. If a unit starts with more than 77, from the for example, then he will not replenish until this number goes below 77, and then it will only return to 77. So, um, for example, uh, Elrond and all of our generals start at 25, I believe, but they will replenish up to 77, uh, and no further than that. We don't have any units that uh, have more than 77, so that's okay. Um, there are no assassins or merchants, only diplomats and spies, which is... Also interesting to note. Many factions or regions have restricted town or castle development. The levels that are available are solos, blah, blah, blah. Orcs and elves cannot upgrade any castles. We are elf, of course, so we can't upgrade any castles. Wildmen cannot go beyond large town and castle. Bree cannot uh, get strongholds in large cities. So yeah, we can't get upgrade any castles. The Balrog and Sauron will both have more than one soldier in their battalion because the game can't create one-man battalions. Very few factions can build boats. Most factions have to rely on mercenary cogs. Probably very... Uh, unrelevant, irre irrelevant even for a while. Elven units have slow replenishment times, often taking up to 20 turns for the next available unit. They are also quite expensive. Yeah, we knew that. The Palantiri are no longer used. They are now just unique buildings that give bonuses, big bonuses that vary from faction to faction. I think this used to be a thing in previous versions of this uh, mod, but that is no longer the case. There are no repercussions for che cheating. Go wild. Well, we won't be doing any of that. Right, and then we get a whole bunch of information about the Realm of Imladris, which, once again, I implore you to read, if you so desire. I will not be doing so right now, because this entire video would just be reading if I did. And lastly, the military report, which is essentially the barracks event. It's telling us we have to wait 15 years, uh, which is essentially 60 to 68 turns, um, before we can recruit any of our better units. So that is all the setup we need to have. Now, let's have a look at our empire of a single province, uh, in Madras, our generals and things like that. So first of all, our units and such as well, we will look at that. Uh, Elrond. Uh, let's have a look at his unit. Actually, no, we'll, we'll look at his unit later. Um, so first of all, Elrond. He's pretty good. He's got full command, full respect, full authority, and full obedience. Um, he's pretty good. I will kind of scam through this real quick uh basically there is i mean you can you can just tell from all, the, all these things it gives us plus command or a full command full of respect and full authority i think he, i added it up and it's he's got at least like 20 25 uh, authority or something i didn't actually add it up i just looked through them before uh, i played the first couple of turns and with this campaign just to get a feel for it um he also has a, a lot of hp he gets plus three hp from this i think he gets like plus five from or plus eight from uh, his biography which gives him a whole lot of other stuff as well. Um, uh, Elf gives him a bunch of stuff. Noldo, faction leader, gives him another 8 of 40. Oh god, there's so much stuff. Now this is important. Special ability. Uh, most of our generals get one. He has the power of the Eldar, which has a single charge. Uh, lasts for 60 seconds. And it temporarily uh, reduces fatigue. It gives, him, uh, gives the army 150% combat effectiveness. It locks the army morale and it rallies all uh, routing troops. Of our faction. Uh, we get a bunch of respect, some command when attacking, some general command. He's just public order and respect, more respect minus squalor. He's lived for ages, which actually reduces his hit points. He only has 32 uh, as his age, but that obviously is because you can't give this guy several hundred years old and then he would just die the next turn, basically. Um, so yeah, he's just got the trait. He's got a talent with numbers, which gives more building points and increase in trade. A talent for command, and he's a night fighter, which gives him plus one during night battles. So that's him. Now a cheeky Sire. peek at Prince Aladan, who is, I believe, our heir. Yes, he's our heir apparent, which gives him a bunch of stuff. He has a biography too, because he's a, a well-known character in the universe of Thor Rings. Um, he also has a special ability, which is the Light of Elbereth. He has three charges, uh, six, uh, 120 second cooldown, two minutes. It lasts for 30 seconds, and it gives uh, the army a 150% combat effectiveness. Uh, it gives plus five to the morale of the troops, and plus three to the allied troops' morale. Um, and beyond that, he just has a bunch of things as well. Uh, he's also an effective ambusher. Interesting to note. He has a few uh, retinues himself as well. We have a lot of command against orcs, which is good. And then our last general is Elro here, the younger son. He's 16, he's 17, right, okay. Uh, you, these aren't actual ages, again, they're not accurate, but... Uh, he also has a biography, because he's also an important character. He's got a special ability a lot of Elbereth, just as his brother does. He has a legacy of respect, because of his noble father. That's interesting. 
Uh, generally loyal, yada yada. Just another good commander. Obviously not as good as Elrond himself, but they're both pretty damn good regardless. And lastly, we have a general down here. Uh, Dornor Nostum. Sounds pretty good. I'm probably just going to call this guy Dornor, because that name is way too long. He is also an elf. He has a different uh, retinue, so I'll have a look at that in a second. He doesn't have any... Oh, sorry, not retinue. Uh, unit. His retinue is empty. Uh, he's just generally an okay commander, but nothing too special here. He's just a, a regular dude. No biography for him, because no one knows who Dornor Nostum is. Anyway, while we're here, let's have a look at his unit. So he is a cavalry unit. He's only got 11 men. I'm actually not sure if he replenishes to 77 too. I haven't seen this, but maybe. I, I, I don't know. I don't. I think the cavalry have different numbers. Uh, 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 that's what it said in the beginning anyway. So he has 11 soldiers. 14 attack, 16 charge with a secondary attack of 16 as well. We'll go over this in a second. Uh, 41 total defense, which is pretty damn good. Uh, only 1 HP though. But I guess that's because in this game, the generals get uh, extra HP from things like this. Well, I don't know we have, yeah, here, the elf, for example. Anyway, so a little bit of information, or extra information on all the units that uh, can be found down here as well. It's got a bonus versus horses and wargs, for example. Secondary attack is the second attack after the charge, which is exactly the same. So he does 16, 16, and then he goes down to 14 attack. I think that's how it works anyway. Um... Anyway, so yeah, ultra-heavy armor is morale is excellent, locked, etc. Pretty good unit in general. Then, um, all our general, all our, all our remaining generals have the same unit, so we can just look at this one. This is the Noldering Guard, who have 25 soldiers, but again, these guys can go up to 77, I think. Um, some information there as well, but this is the more important stuff. Uh, but anyway, 25 melee attack, which is insane. 13 missile attack, which is also insane. 41 uh, total defense, they've got uh, ac exceptional accuracy, 235 meter range, which I think is some of the highest in the game, if not the highest, 38 missiles, just, this is this unit is insane, like, you can put these guys in a, if you have, like, these, him and his, his brother and his uh, father in a single battle against, like, a full stack of, of mountain orcs or whatever, uh, they probably win, these guys are insane. Um, our other units, we have our Sword Quendi. Which is basically our militia unit, but these guys are... Actually, we should look at the towns in the town, because we don't have any experience on those. Um, these guys are our militia, but they're really expensive. They're way better than militia. Like, these guys are as good as the second tier for most other factions, basically. All the elven factions get unit like, units like this. 8 attack, 4 charge bonus, 16 defense. Uh, good morale, good morale response, etc. Very good unit overall. Then we have the Bow Quendi, which is the uh, the ranged variant of the Quendi, which has 6 melee attack and 13 defense, which is almost as good. Well, I mean, it's not quite, but it's uh, it's pretty damn close. You could put these guys in the melee and they would be okay. Um, missile attack of 6, which is uh, pretty decent. They've got a uh, good morale response as well, as well as good morale. 20 missiles, 170 meter range, and average accuracy. And lastly, we have... Talkus is Faithful, which is uh, a little better, but they're also extremely expensive, 510 upkeep. They have 14 attack, which is great, 8 charge, which is great, 18 defense, which is great. No shield, though, which is important to know. Uh, they're effective against armor, which is good. They've got very good morale, good morale response. Uh, they've got a bonus versus camels, wargs, and oliphants. No horses, notably. And lastly, we can... Uh, this is another one of those general units, which we can recruit later, I believe, but not currently. I think we need a stables or something for that. Uh, Nora Tierno Cavalry. No, this is a different one. Okay, this is a worse unit, I imagine. Uh, yeah, they're definitely not as good. But Anyway, we have one more unit. We have a, a Dunedain Warden unit, which we can recruit later, not currently. We need a building for that. Uh, these guys, the stats are kind of off because we have uh, free experience and uh, some damage and stuff. But I think these guys are at like 7 attack or 6 attack or something. And then they've got like... They're, they're slightly worse than the Sword Quendi, but they have more units. They have 152, they've got 26 more men, 24 more men even than the Sword Quendi. And they're also much, much cheaper, so it definitely, it definitely is worth recruiting Dunedain Wardens. For now, however, we're just going to recruit a Spy and a Diplomat. Um, and, well, I guess we should have a look at where we want to go. So, we have a lot of options as Imladris, because we can essentially go anywhere we want. There is Rebel towns all around us to the northwest and south although i think uh, the one up here is going to get taken uh, in the the first turn because the first turn 
all the AI factions, uh, sorry, the first end turn sequence, all the AI factions take like one, two, three towns, depending on how big they are, um, automatically, because it's sort of, it's, I don't know, it, I think they, they did it so that you don't start out as a huge faction right away, so um, whoever you play starts out small, but then all the other factions get a, get a few uh, territories right away. But if you play as those factions yourself, you can't do the same thing. Um, anyway, so we can go anywhere we want, essentially, uh, and even we, we can even go east. Uh, we're at war with the Orcs of the Misty Mountains, um, which they own all the Misty Mountains, as you might expect. Um, and uh, over here is Goblin Town, for example, this is one of the large, I think it might be their capital, yeah, it's their capital even. Uh, they've got a big one down here, or yeah, down here as well. Um, but yeah, we can go against them if we want to, I'm probably going to not do that immediately, but soonish. We are also where the remnants of Agmar, who are to our north in here. And then we are where the Bandits of Rebels. We are allied to the Northern Dunedain and the Grey Havens of Lindon, both to our west. Uh, Dunedain around here, Grey Havens of Lindon all the way over here. Um, and that is our diplomacy, basically. Anyway, so the point is where we want to go. Right, so we know there's a town, well, we don't, I do. I know there's a town over here somewhere, um, which is what this force is going to go towards. I also know there's a town up here somewhere, which we're probably going to send a small force towards once these guys are done over here and just meet them up together, I guess. And then there's a town over here, which we could take too. This area here is known for... Um, it's basically a troll-owned territory, so there's a ton of troll ambushes, but I'm pretty sure there's a clear way to get to that town uh, if you just stay, stick to the road, basically. You won't get ambushed or anything like that, so we just got to be careful after that that we don't get ambushed or something like that. Anyway, um, we are very poor. We're currently making one, that's with the two units recruited already, but we're making one buck. We still got to move out all of our units. In fact, we're going to start doing that right away. So we're going to besiege this next turn. You can see our income is now already minus 1100 nearly. Let me just cancel these ones real quick. So we're currently at minus 479 and we've only moved out three of our units. We're going to go bankrupt. There's no way, no two ways about that. We're going to take Elrond, I think we're going to take uh, this guy as well. And we're going to take all of these forces, except for the two Tokus as Faithfuls. We'll keep them inside because they're extremely expensive. Um, I'm even tempted to leave more behind, actually. We don't, for so I'm not sure, please feel free to tell me in the comments. Uh, again, my, my experience with Medieval 2 is very, very limited. So I don't know why we don't get uh, free upkeep for... Uh, him because his unit is much more expensive. I know that for a fact and I tried to put the other generals inside too You don't get upkeep reduction or sorry. You don't get free upkeep for those either You do get it when you're put them in the fort though, but not when you um, when you have been in lodges for some reason So feel, feel free to tell me if you know why that is but I don't Anyway, so we want to keep as many units in here for free upkeep But I also know that we're likely to get a quest at some point that'll give us free units anyway, so we're just gonna we're just gonna go for broke. We're, we know we're gonna go bankrupt. We're just gonna take uh, as large an army as we can, essentially, and um, and just go on the attack. I think. I'm just wondering because I might want to send some stuff down south to help out over here, but I think, yeah, well, this is fine. Okay, let's go this way. We're gonna take him as well, but I'm gonna make a watchtower here. And we'll put him in there. I'm gonna send him up here. I build ourselves a watchtower there, so we get some more information. We know Goblin Town is right there, we can't quite see it, but it's good enough. Oh my god, what the hell was that? We're like an explosion or some shit. And we're gonna send him back to uh, Um, And we can also make a building, of course. Oh, and I should uh, definitely queue those up again. We gotta go back, well, we're gonna go down to low tax rate, because we wanna, I mean, the money is extremely small, doesn't really do much for us, and we need to get that population up ASAP. Anyway, building, so we've got a lot of options here, um, don't really care about any of the recruitment stuff right now, don't really care about that, don't really care about that, because we're barely trading with anyone, I think we've got trade going with the two allies we have currently. Um, sorry, I am back. I just have to check out what the hell that noise was. Anyway, um, basically, what I want is stuff that makes me money. Because right now we're uh, we're going broke very rapidly. 
and we need stuff that is going to make us money. Now, the Dunedan Outpost is a good building to get because we want to get that before we go broke because it will allow us to recruit Dunedain Wardens and Dunedain Cavalry. Dunedain Wardens we know are much cheaper than some of the other units. Cavalry not so much, but we might be useful to get some. And we also get a number or an extra one free upkeep unit, except that we already have more than we currently have units in the town. So it doesn't really do much for us anyway, but it'd be a good building to get. It doesn't cost too much. But I think I'm going to go for the mines first. Just get that out of the way. And we'll get the Dunedan outpost soon after. If we can still afford it. Which we likely won't be able to. Because we're currently losing a lot of money. Without the building it's not as much. But even so. We're going to go broke rapidly. But we're going to be able to take some towns. Hopefully fairly soon as well. So. With all that out of the way. I could have sworn that. Uh, I don't think we could have been. Yeah. I think this is the closest we, we can get to that. I thought building one there would would give us vision on the uh, the actual town, but sadly it doesn't, unfortunately. We do know there's a fort there, but it doesn't really do much for us right now. Anyway, um, I think we, uh, we've we seen just about everything there is to see. Our family tree, but it doesn't really do much for us right now, so let's end the turn. I also just noticed that I've got the, the time in the bottom left turned off. I'll have to turn that on again. I turned it on, I thought, but apparently it's turned itself off again. Not entirely sure why, but so be it. Um, but yeah, that, that uh, basically the year, so that it tells you what year it is, um, that is turned off for some reason. But it's okay. It doesn't really matter, but it'd be, it'd be cool to know. Moria has been reclaimed. Ephelion has been reclaimed. Very good. We recruited a diplomat as well as a spy. We Prince Aladdin got the crown of Gilgalad, which I need to give to whoever I want to be the next heir. Um, which I'm guessing right now is him, so he can keep it, and then I give it to someone else afterwards. When he like when Elrond dies, if Elrond dies, he likely won't for the entire campaign. But speaking of, he got plus two command, plus two of forty. He doesn't really need it because he already got a ton. But that was a retinue, wasn't it? Commander of the troops. See, we ought to give some stuff to him. Because... Well, he's a first commander, and I'm mean, like, we're giving away the first commander thing, but... Um, yeah, I ought to give some stuff away, because he's got plenty of everything. And his son doesn't, so why would we... Maybe I shouldn't have kept the heir as well as the uh, faction in the same place, by the way, but oh well. He can do some more command and respect. So if we got anything that gives us command and respect, then we should give that away. We don't really just a fourteen respect. It's a sword. I don't really want to give stuff away though, because it makes me feel bad. Like if I give the leader the White Council away, then he, like he's still the leader, but then his son's carrying that thing. It's like it's kind of weird, you know. Anyway, let's just um, let's keep a move on. We should be able to besiege the town next turn. You are going to make your way back here, hopefully without this guy intercepting. Well, he, can, he can get there if he wanted to. Um, okay, well... Yeah, we can't quite make it, so why don't we just go over here so he can't reach, and I guess we can run away if we have to. That way he can't reach, he can stand right next to us. I guess we should... yeah, one more step back. Um... Right, and down here, you're going to besiege them. I'm going to siege them all the way out. I don't want to actually attack them, so I'll just queue up some stuff, but I won't actually be using any of it. Keep them off balance. We're currently losing almost all of our money, so we're going to go broke next turn. Well, the turn after that, even. Diplomat, you're going to start heading west. And our spy, 75% chance. You know what? I'll take that. Good. Get him, or make him become a little better, be useful. Uh, Alright, so we know what they've got. It's a lot of really crappy units, but it probably would be enough to kill just the general. That general's pretty damn good by himself, but even so. Um, let's head down here real quick. So this is Zakala, which is another large uh, large town from the uh, Orcs of the uh, Misty Mountains. And we can see this has been taken. This hasn't, though. This is still yeah, Holland. 
Hold on, we probably want to take two. I think that town is up here somewhere. So that should be our next target after we've taken this. We'll send some stuff down this way too. Maybe some of uh, Elrond's army. We'll, we'll see. Also, you can see now 35, 31. So the army is starting to grow. I think he's, st yeah, he's still at 11. So I don't think he's going to go up. He's still at 25. So he also hasn't gone up. I'm not sure why. What the reason behind that is, but... Anyway, um... I don't know what I'm doing with him, so let's end another turn. There's not much I can do. I can recruit a unit before we go bankrupt, but I feel like it's pointless. I should recruit another diplomat so I can send them east, because we've got a lot of ways to go to get more um, trade and things like that. Um, yeah, we could recruit a unit. We'd get free upkeep for it, so technically it's not a terrible idea. Maybe I should do it. It'll just take longer before we actually make money. It is, it's basically just going to be a, gar a unit for a garrison. Let's, yeah, let's recruit a boat, Quendi. Why not? Sounds good to me. Can I recruit? I can't quite afford another one, which is unfortunate. If I could, I would have done that. can do that, but then I can't get a diplomat. I kind of want to get a diplomat. Maybe I should recruit him. I don't know. It just feels bad to do so, but it also is... A free unit, essentially. It's the upkeep. I don't have to pay the upkeep, and that's the thing. Let's just get one of those, then. Screw it. Let's just go all out. If we're going to go crazy, we're not paying upkeep for him anyway. He's just going to sit in the town. We're just going to have a very ridiculously strong... Oh my god, that noise. I think it's a, uh, a boat. I live near a dock, so probably a boat taken off. Okay, he just uh, went around so I can get my general back into Imladris, which is good, because I didn't like him standing out there by himself. But he doesn't have to anymore. Thank the lord. Right, we have a mission to take Kamath Bryn, which is just over here. That's what we're planning on doing. Uh, it's going to take a little bit, though, because we'll have to siege him out. That's okay. We are broke. We recruited our diplomat. We have diplomatic information. Isengard of Rohan are war, Erebor and Woodland Realm are allies. Good, good. You, come back in here. There's another force. I'm gonna stick you. Right, so I'm going to leave this episode here. Uh, and next time we're gonna we're gonna move on. Actually, why don't we uh, start the siege here? Well, uh, once again, we'll besiege this one too. I'm gonna build another ramp for no real reason. We're gonna siege them out too. They have five units. So I don't really want to besiege them. It'll take so many losses for no good reason. Uh, so this one's six turns. That one is five turns. So we'll have a battle in five turns. Yes, my lord. And uh, anyway, rest I will do next time. So until then, thank you very much for watching the first episode of the Realm of Amladris. Let's play on Divide and Conquer. As I said in the beginning, all the links to the mod information is in the description in case you're wanting to download it yourself. And beyond that, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day and goodbye.